Hi, I'm Chris Long with Long's Northwest Hitch in Northwest Arkansas. Today we're honored to be at the B&W Manufacturing Facility in Humboldt, Kansas. We're here on special invitation today to show you the new products that are available for the 2013 Dodge Ram 3500 series of vehicles. A little background about who I am and why we're here. Uh, we're a family owned and operated business in Northwest Arkansas that's been in business now for over 30 years. And we've been installing the B&W line of products now for over a decade. In our opinion, it's one of the highest quality products that you can install in your vehicle, and we're very honored to be here today to show you the installation of that product. As you may or may not know, the new 2013 Ram one-ton trucks have been completely redesigned with a new chassis. As a result of this chassis redesign, the turnover ball has also been redesigned with several different product differences that you need to be aware of. One of those differences is the fact that now instead of getting two boxes when you order your product, everything is nice and neatly contained in one product box. So don't think that you've been shorted any product. Another difference is the fact that we've gone to a three and a half inch hole now in the bed instead of the four inch hole that you've been accustomed to. So it might be a good idea to get your hands on a three and a half inch hole saw so that it looks better in the customer's pickup. One of the reasons for this big redesign is the fact that Dodge has put in a new cross member that has been specifically designed for the installation of a gooseneck hitch. This is going to eliminate the need for side plates and rails, giving us a much neater, cleaner installation. Also too, the handle has been slightly redesigned, and we'll get into that a little bit later in the video to show you how the, the operation of the new handle works. As we open the box to the new 1314 turnover ball, you'll find that everything inside is nice and neatly packed that you'll need for the installation. Here are the installation instructions. Be sure to follow these to the letter until you come, become better acquainted with the installation of this particular hitch. Here's the all move cross member that we talked about earlier. You're going to notice that they've already provided a three and a half inch hole uh, in the factory cross member, uh, which is designed just for the gooseneck ball. Something you're really going to like about this new hitch is we don't have to do any measurements inside the bed now for, uh, for gooseneck placement. Um, now what they've done is they've given us this nice little template uh, that you can raise right up inside the factory hole. You can see the hole here in the, in the template here. We just raise this up inside the hole. It centers itself up perfectly. We can take a pencil or other marking device and put it right inside, the, right inside the hole and mark the bottom of the bed. Now we've already cut our hole in the bed here, but we want to take, you this, take this moment to show you how that works. And then once that's down, we can center punch our mark right here, drill a quarter inch pilot hole from underneath the bed, and then we can actually drill our three and a half inch hole from inside the bed on top. Now as you can see we've already cut our three and a half inch hole in the bed. If you're used to using a four inch hole saw you want to remember that this new 1314 takes a three and a half inch hole saw. By using the smaller hole saw you'll gain a much cleaner appearance of your gooseneck ball. Now after we've cut our hole in the bed the next step is to install our spacer block. This is easily done by just sliding the spacer block in on the front side of the cross member, sliding it into position, lining it up with your finger, and making sure it's square with the cross member. All right, after we put in our spacer block, the next step is to put in the threaded plates. Now, you're not used to seeing these, but this is the hardware that's going to hold the gooseneck hitch in the truck. Um, these are specific to left and right side, and there's a nice diagram in the installation instructions that will actually show you which one's which, but the easiest way to tell, the handle is flush with the bottom of the plate, so that'll get you oriented right up and down, and the tabs always face forward. So this is our driver's side plate, and this is our passenger side block. Okay, we're gonna put the passenger side block in first, and we're gonna do this by going outside the frame and placing the block between the cross member and the bed, and then you're gonna use your finger to feel for the plate and line one of the holes, one of the three holes up, and once you get that into position, you just pivot it in place until you feel that tab line up with a slot that's provided in the cross member from Dodge. Once that tab is in the slot, you'll see that all three holes are completely lined up with the factory holes that are provided. Then you repeat this step on the driver's side. You may find it much easier to install the center section by dropping the rear exhaust this can be accomplished by taking the rear exhaust hanger, spritzing some soapy water on the end of the hanger, and using a pry bar or other type of pry tool to just pry the rubber hanger off of the end of the carry stud. This will allow the exhaust to drop down out of the way and move to the side 
not only to get the center section installed easier, but also to allow access for a torque wrench later in the installation. It's very helpful to have a lifting device when installing the product, especially if you're by yourself. This is the hitch helper, which is available from BMW. Make sure installation is snap. I highly recommend one. It's very important not to have too much slack in your hitch helper bracket. This particular model requires the center section to be up inside the hole to engage properly, so we don't want too much slack there. When raising the center section, we're just going to raise the center section up over the brake lines of the exhaust. And then we'll line up with our hitch helper and get it to the actual ball hole of the center section. And then we'll raise the center section up into place. You want to make sure that your spacer block is lined up. Like so. And then we'll turn our hitch helper bracket sideways. Engage the lift pin. And now we can raise the center section the remainder of the way from the top side of the bed. All right, the hitch helper is now holding our center section firmly against the underside of the bed. I've taken the time to make sure that my holes in the center section, the vehicle cross member, and the threaded block are all lined up. Now something you'll notice in this new, pit, new hardware pack is the old bolt style with the lock washers and washers have now been replaced by a single one-piece bolt with a neoprene lock. So this is going to be a much nicer, neater installation without as much hardware to deal with. Simply take the bolt, line it up with the, with the threaded holes inside the, thread, inside the threaded block, and what we're going to do is we're going to turn this. It's only going to turn about a quarter, maybe a half of a turn, before you feel that neoprene begin to hold. It's important to make sure they're not cross-threaded, but just get them good and firmly started with your hands. Then once all six of them are in and started, We'll go ahead and, and tighten these up all the rest of the way to the torque spec of 100 foot-pounds. All right, you guys are going to love this new handle design. Instead of using the single bolt with the, with the uh, bolt and, and nut that you have to use two wrenches on, you'll notice the two square holes in the latching mechanism for carriage bolts. What you're going to do is open the latch fully, and this will allow us to get the bolts in from the top down. You kind of have to work in here a little bit with your fingers. And get both bolts through the square holes like so. Once the bolts are installed in the handle you can close the latch and in the handle mechanism right here you're going to slide it forward of the brake, li brake lines over the fuel tank over the driver's side frame rail and just line the, line the two bracket tabs together. And come with a nice little flange nut. It's actually a flange lock nut, so you don't have to use uh, washers and lock washers. And these can be snugged up and torqued to 30 foot pounds. All right, the next step is to put in our safety chain loops. And these are going to install the same way that you're used to, but there's just a few minor differences. First of all, instead of offering two different hole sets for the U bolt, They've, they've made it real simple now. There's just one place to put the U-bolt, so you can't get that part wrong. The U-bolts are a little bit wider and a little bit longer than the earlier ones. And what you're going to have is instead of drilling just through the bed like you've done before, the forward hole you're drilling through the cross member and the bed. So it's a little bit more important instead of just drilling up through the bed the, the way you always have before, is make sure your drill is perpendicular with that cross member. Um, if, that, if that holds slightly off at any type of angle, then the U-bolts the the aren't going to lay down inside the bed and look right. So be sure when you go through the cross member hole that you're holding your drill perpendicular to keep the hole straight. Alright, our turnover ball has now been successfully installed. The latch pin handle operates similar to the way they always have, but now instead of pulling the latch and having a rotating action, we pull the latch and then pull the lever towards the front of the cab. Now the, the ball has been disengaged to be able to be removed from the bed and turned over. To re-engage the pin, simply push the pin to the back of the truck and it re-engages. BMW is now supplying us with the warning label, which you can place on the inner fender well liner or on the frame. Guys, I just installed the very first BMW 1314 turnover ball for the all-new Ram 3500. And as an experienced field installer, I would tell you that this is probably going to be the easiest and fastest gooseneck installation that you've experienced to date. Most importantly, BMW is listening to its customers and the ball still stows in the bed when your customer's not using their trailer.
in true BMW fashion, a hitch when you need it, a level bed when you don't.